time once again to slip into your camo, grab your bow, and join us out in the field for another episode of the Up North Journal, presented by PSE Archery. The Up North Journal crew is knocked and ready to rock for another exciting adventure. So let's step outside and hit the trail. This episode is brought to you by PSE Archery, Black Eagle Arrows, Cabela's, Antler Action, Spot Shooter Archery, Tom's Custom Turkey Calls, Family Traditions Tree Stands, and Badass Slingshots. Welcome back to another episode of the Up North Journal, everybody. I'm your host, Mike Adams, sitting in with Dan DeFaw. Well, you know what, Mike? I found you. I was never missing. Yes, you were. I, I Last knew. week, I had to literally break into the cabin. I to, knew where I was at all the time. Show. You knew where I was at. Yeah, but, oh, hey, I'm not going to be there. So I got dressed in black, and I climbed through the window, and I made a podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I hope nobody does that this week because we're not back in the cabin. We're actually on the road again this week. You're right. We're back in Saginaw. Sitting on the front porch of Cabela's. On a nice sunny day. Watching people come and go, picking up their stuff for archery season. And uh, why are we not in the stand? Uh, That's a good question, isn't it? Yeah, I'll leave that one. Big question, Mark. Opening weekend of archery season, and I was at Cabela's yesterday working uh, for Vortex. Today we're working for Cabela's at Cabela's in Saginaw. This is Deer Classic Weekend. Yeah. Which is actually a surprise because normally they do it the first weekend in November. Yeah, well, I guess this makes a little sense, putting it back around you know, the first of October. Everybody's getting ready for archery season, getting in the woods and doing all that kind of stuff. You know, yesterday... Besides the rain that I saw going down. <laughs> you mean the rain all week? Yeah. I, I started building an arc, actually. <laughs> you know. It, I finished the blind and started building an arc because it's rained for a solid week. It has. And I tell you what, I, I've, what the weatherman's saying after today, it's going to be nice. It better be. But, uh, you know, yesterday I was heading down early in the morning, heading down to Dundee, uh, to Cabela's down there. And it, it was, you could pick out all the different spots where people were hunting because you could see that the trucks pulled over on the side of the road at different <laughs> little hunting spots. And you knew they were hunters just because they were pulled into these little, you know, little pull-off areas uh, right next to woods exactly and you know what it's that time of year you're starting to see that a lot uh i saw it last week when i was out squirrel hunting uh several trucks pulled off in different areas where you know they're in getting their stands ready and whatnot right on you know and here we are yesterday morning a little rainy in the beginning i don't know uh i know i've seen some success on facebook so anybody you know that's put a deer down yet yes a couple of people actually uh Ken Sakluna, who we had on the show, it looks like he got a doe. Okay. And uh, Ken, where's his son? That's right. He shot a six point. Got a six point last yeah. night. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And they're hunting up um, Harrison, I think, is the area. Okay. But uh, yeah, no. So uh, it's 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 open. It's October second today, and uh, the season has commenced. I thought you were going out yesterday morning. No, no, no. I was uh, just hanging back, uh, doing the things around, uh, doing around the. Getting ready because in uh, three weeks when I leave, mm-hmm. then we're gonna do some hunting. Okay, gotcha. So, but uh, we know uh, Robin went out for the first time. She was out, she, uh, watching her reports from Facebook. Um, I don't know. I think oh Cody went out in Ohio on Friday. I, right. Did you see that Facebook live? That I he saw did? he did a Facebook live as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, and I know their season opened not this uh, weekend. Last past weekend, I should say, the twenty fourth. Yep. But uh, they had uh, a small buck on, on camera. They didn't. Uh, they didn't do any shooting down there. Him and Mara. But uh, you know, at least they're seeing some deer. Y- you know what? They're seeing some deer, and we uh, uh, in a couple weeks because we're both going to go up the same week. It sounds like. Yeah. Well, actually, I'm going. I'll be up the weekend before. But um, yeah, I'm taking that same week off as you. Hopefully, we'll be seeing some deer. I better be. I'm looking forward to it. I mean, I, I pulled trail cam photos, looked at them. Um, yeah, I'm going to say it's a little disconcerting. Um, you know, if I have to fill the freezer this year with does, that's fine. But uh, the bucks, either I got the cameras in the wrong spot or they've changed their, their patterns. But Do you think the logging did it? Don't know. You know, I know there's been a lot of activity up on the property. There's, you know, we had the logging that's taken place. And, you know, I was up there, you know, messing around with my blind. And we've had other people up there messing around with their blinds. And, um yeah, I, I don't know. I, I guess when I go back up and pull the rest of my cards uh, that I didn't didn't get a chance to look at, I'll have a better idea. Um, but I, I got this this one photo. It's pretty cool. Um, right off the two track where uh, there's a deer run that crosses, I got a camera set up. And it looked like about a two and a half, may, maybe a three and a half year old. I think it was two and a half year old eight point. And he was on his hind legs, just as high as he could reach, 
and had his his nose in the end of a branch. I, I assume making a you know licking, really? licking branch, yeah, on an oak tree. It was pretty cool. But he was all the way up on his hind legs, and I'm like, you know, that's that's pretty cool to be able to see that. That is cool when you catch that on camera. And I've seen uh, similar to that in my backyard watching a mama doe kind of teach. I, I'm going to say teach because the little the two yearlings were staring at her, watching her do this. Yeah, same almost the same thing, but they were going for the leaves off the tree. Yeah, right and, on. And uh, then they caught on and figured out. Uh, Hey, I guess that's how we're going to get some food here. <laughs> yeah, you got to teach the little ones where to, where to go for the food. Absolutely. When mama's done taking care of them, feeding them. Do you, do you think maybe the patterns are changing for a fall-type pattern, maybe? Um, I would hope so. I mean, the weather's drastically changed here in Michigan. You know, I don't know about the other states, but here in Michigan, we've had a, a good 15, 20-degree swing in temperatures. You know, and, and I guess this week, looking at the weather, it's going to be like a, a 70 high 50 low for the rest of the, for the week yeah and sunny yeah typical so, october so it's gonna it's gonna even out a little bit so hopefully that it's the weather change that that happens in michigan right right on you know and uh i i don't think you you, you haven't had a freeze up at your camp yet have you not that i know of no and i don't no. think we've had one at our camp either no the, the, i think the lowest temperatures we've had has been in the mid 40s May, maybe the low 40s um when i was up there well about a month ago it, it was really chilly one morning but but beyond that no it, it's, it's been nothing it's been that close to freezing yet so so yeah it, it's 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 kind of i don't know staying warm here not getting a cold snap yet but you know those will be coming soon well as soon as that does you know the food plots quit growing the, the deer start digging and uh you know it, it's game on at that point so you right know. and you got your food plots all set ready to go and yep got their uh their winter feeding form yeah i was actually contemplating i was talking with our camp manager um I got a, a small spot that I'd like to see worked up. I don't know if it's going to get done this year or not. Um, we've talked about it. I just don't think it's going to be able to. It'd be nice to go ahead and, and get it prepped maybe for next year. I don't know. I don't know yet, but it's. Uh, okay, decisions, decisions, huh? Yeah, yeah. It's just one of them things, you know, you start seeing things and, you know, moving your blinds and getting things set up, and you're like, you know, this would be a prime spot for a small, you know, um, just a little shooting plot and. I don't know, man. It's just I, I just think it's a little late in the game. I don't I don't see it happening this year, but next year definitely. Definitely, you know what? It, it, if it doesn't happen this year, it, it's already a start for next year, and it kind of sets up your game plan. Well, uh, you know me, man. Th- thinking deer three sixty five, you know, it, it never stops. It seems to be that way, and uh, you know, you start out thinking, you know, we'll, we'll go through our uh, our annual seasons, but it does seem that the, the deer on our mind is like a three sixty five. Absolutely, uh, definitely. I mean, I'm already you know making plans and trying different things and thinking about next year um laying plans out you know this year we had a lot of work had a a ton of work to do and kind of got behind the eight ball as most plans do and you don't get caught up until right before season it's like okay at what point do i quit working and start playing well you were you were uh to the last weekend before opener right getting that blind out there so yeah you you know very well and there's still some tweaks i need to do to it even on the inside that i'll probably finish up that i can do quietly and, and not disturb anything so um, yeah, it'll it'll be a progression throughout the season. That'll work, you know what? And hey, as long as we're outdoors thinking about it, I'm I'm good with that. Right on. You know, I'm staring, sitting here, staring at these kayaks, thinking, yeah, I'm thinking either probably towards the end of this month, I'm going to have to figure out how to get those kayaks in my garage and put them up for the winter. Yeah, yeah, it's always, uh, you know, <laughs> we dump chemical in the pool. Uh, tomorrow for me is going to be wrap the pool up day. You know, getting all those fall activities done so I don't have to worry about it later in the season and make sure I can maximize my time in the outdoors. And we don't need a sneaky freeze. No, no. And, you know, that can happen at any point in time here in Michigan. Yep, exactly. So, no, I'm just sitting here thinking, looking at those kayaks going, yeah, it's going to have to. More work to be done. Yep, exactly. So, but uh, other than that, you know, it's just been a typical rainy week here in Michigan. Um, It's been super soggy. You know, the food plots are growing (laughs) and, you know, that's a good thing. There has been some serious water out there. Definitely. But has. I don't know if they've been getting as much rain up by you and your camp as much we have down here, though. There's been, no, they haven't. Okay, I, they didn't. You know, okay. and that's something you bring up that actually I've been thinking about doing. Um, and I, I check with our weather guy at work uh, who's got a little bit of knowledge on the weather. The at weather guy's I, got a little knowledge I, I, of weather? I hope he does. I hope he does. Okay, <laughs> I hope so. So, but uh, one thing I was thinking about, you know, with our, our deer management and habitat management plan that we're trying to put it together and start up at our camp. Uh, you know, we have internet access. I thought, how cool would it be to have a outside weather station hooked up to internet so I can log in at any time and see, you know, what's going on up there and keep data, you know, figure out how much rain we've had, you know, figure out what the weather conditions are. You want to talk about instant weather fact. 
Yeah, yeah. Well, there's a couple of them that do keep data, you know, over a period of time as well. So, like, you could say, well, this week we've had so much rain or, or you know, or this month it's been average temperature has been this. So when you're starting to correlate food plots or other habitat that you've planted and it's maybe not faring so well, you can go back and look and go, well, yeah, okay. We've had a dry time. We've, or... had, we've had, you know, the last three weeks of no rain, you know, or it's been extremely hot or what have you. You know, well, hey. And I, and I bet you the weather guy would like that, to tap into that and get some weather information from you. Uh, I don't know if I'll give him it. He, he's got more computers and all that kind of cool stuff to do that stuff. He somewhere. does have some cool stuff, yeah. I bet. But he, he turned me on to a weather station that uh, has uh, wire, wireless capability to hook up to a router <laughs> cool. so we can put it outside of our lodge you know, and Wi-Fi it into the modem. And then you can dial in from a phone app and, and log, download or check in and see what all is going on. You know, it's kind of cool. That is very cool. I mean, so. so we could sit there on a... On a a cabin night and say, hey, what's the weather up at the, your camp? And we yeah. log in and yeah. find out. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now that is cool. Yeah. I'm waiting to have cameras put up. You know, if we could do a live camera feed, that'd be kind of cool. Oh, that would be. Get a yeah. live camera, the, the live cam from camp. Yeah. Well, I'm talking about like on a food plot. Well, that's what I mean. Yeah. You, you know, hey, check it out right now and see what's in the food yeah. plot. Yeah, I mean, there's possibilities of making stuff like that happen. It's just how much money do you want to throw at it? Absolutely. That's... So if there's anybody out there with a trail cam company that would like to join us in this venture <laughs> would be more than happy to entertain that thought with absolutely you. so well, i'll tell you what we're bumping up here on our first break we've been talking a little deer hunting talking a little weather talking uh getting in the mood for hunting so we're sitting here at cabela's on the front porch uh watching people come and go with goodies in their hands and uh let's step outside well we're already outside let's yeah, just let's continue to stay outside and we'll take our first break and we'll be right back after this i shoot pse because i like one pin to 40 yards. I shoot PSE for the perfect combination of feel and performance. I shoot PSE because you can shoot lighter poundage and increase arrow speed. I shoot PSE for the fastest bows on the planet. I shoot PSE because my livelihood depends on my bow. I shoot PSE because better engineering makes a better bow. I shoot PSE. 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 Experience PSE. Experience performance. We know the future of hunting depends on our nation's youth. But did you know that in many states, it's illegal for you to take your son or daughter hunting until the age of 12 or even older? As a result, we have fewer young hunters, and the Families of Field program is designed to eliminate those barriers. Hunting is safe, and the safest hunters of field are young people with adult mentors. Visit our website at familiesoffield.org to find out how you can bring more families afield. Welcome back, second segment of the show. The sun is still shining. And we're still at Cabela's. And it feels nice being outside and not, not wet. Absolutely. It, it's beautiful out here. Um, you know, speaking of being outdoors, out in the public, out on land, we're talking deer hunting, we're talking hunting in general. It's that time of year. Did you happen to catch the story this week on Facebook um, that I shared on our page about the land acquisition in Idaho? You know, I saw the headline. I didn't read the article. Uh, but uh, you gave me the uh, the Cliff Notes version of what it was about, and uh, kind of makes me leery of uh, public land hunting. Uh, yeah, it's uh, I kind of back up on this just a little yep. bit, um, and I'm going to paraphrase, and I want to make sure, I, I don't have it right in front of me, so if I misquote something a little bit here or there, forgive me. But uh, basically, a uh, big chunk of land out in Idaho, okay, and it was owned by a logging company. Um, and said logging company had allowed access to hunt this land. Um, you know, it's kind of what we have here, commercial forestry right. lands here CFA in Michigan. Land. Yeah. Yep. So, you know, you, you put in for these public land hunts, and w- sometimes they're limited draw hunts, things of that nature. And, right. And there, this land was set up for a limited draw hunt for elk, okay? It was kind of co- a coveted tag from what I understand. Okay, so the people have this knowledge that if you go out, out there to elk hunt that they'll be able to go on this land right so you put in for your draw you save your points what have you you finally you draw your tag 
and there was a gentleman out of, I believe it was Arkansas, um, not 100% sure on that, but I think he was out of Arkansas, and I think he was a school teacher. So, you know, he, he got his tag, purchased his tag after winning the lottery draw on this, this elk hunt, uh, limited, limited draw area, uh, secured his uh, plane reservation, hotel reservations, had everything, his time off work booked, the whole nine yards. So he were, was totally geeked up about going elk hunting. Yeah. And then said logging company sold the land to some billionaires in Texas who shut it all down. Um, and not to mention there was also some, some pri- or public land public land out there that all of a sudden became landlocked and had no access to. So the people and that hunted that area could not gain access to that area either. And they weren't granting access. No, they're not granting access. And, and on top of that, the, the, the one guy who was kind of the main focus of the story uh, he cannot switch his time for hunting because they did the, the state of Idaho. You know, they, they kind of stepped to the plate and said, you know, we understand. So we'll let you switch your tag for a general a general hunt in such and such area. Right. Which is not as good, obviously. But the problem was, is that hunt was at a different time and he couldn't switch his time. Uh, his okay, vacation so time and all that. So he's he's you know, he's out the money. He's out the tag. He's a, he's out a whole bunch. Almost like a, a once in a lifetime hunt. Right. Well, I don't know if it's that. If it's but, but, that, but to yeah, that person, to that it person. could be right. Could you know, be right. Here you are. You 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 you've done everything. Right. You needed to do. Dotted your T's. Dotted. <laughs> dotted <laughs> your T's and crossed your eyes. Yes. You exactly. got cross eyes, don't you? you yes. Mean, dotted um, your eyes and crossed your T's. Here you do everything like that, and all of a sudden they go and they sell the land yeah. out from under you, and all of a sudden where you thought you were going, you couldn't get to. Yeah. Um. And, and I guess that's what we're talking about: public land hunts, maybe that are owned by. Um, by a corporation, um, you know, especially like forestry lands, that this is a possibility. And, you know, and also talking about public lands, um, all of a sudden become landlocked, you know. And we've, we've, we, you and I, we, you know, uh, met with Jason Meekoff from uh, Backcountry Hunters and yep. Anglers, and that's their main focus of keeping public lands public, keeping them open. Um, now, obviously, in this situation, it was a piece of private land that was sold off, but, but we're talking also about this public land that got landlocked. Exactly. Well, the, 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 the public land getting landlocked was a, was a total uh, kind of, it went with the bucket, right? Yeah. You yeah. know, the, biting the shorts. Yeah, to say the least. <laughs> Put it politely. You know, and I don't know how big that public land was, but, um, you know, that kind of really sucks. Yeah, it does. And, you know, I guess this is this is one of the reasons, um, you know, we, we need to think about, you know, saving our public lands in, in places like backcountry hunters and anglers who are out there fighting for us mucc does a good job here in michigan michigan united conservation club they keep on the on the on the tabs of what's going on and right. what because we also see that the michigan dnr sells land right you know they have land sell-offs and then these uh commercial forestry act areas that are up north yeah that there's a ton of acreage that's yep. available that right. everybody can hunt today but sounds like uh could be here today gone tomorrow Right. Well, you know, and, and, and let's put the shoe on the other foot now. You think about these companies that own this land. I mean, I I know what we got paid for for our logging project. Okay. You know, and I know, you know, they have to make money on things as well. I mean, our land's private, but, I mean, let's say they own a big track of land up north in the UP. And they go in and they, and they cut it. You know, now they're paying taxes on land that they have to set and wait, depending on what type of uh, trees they plant, of how long they have to wait before they can yes, exactly. recut it again. So do they sell it? Do they keep it? You know, I understand that there's those issues as well. So it, it's not just as like, oh, man, these guys sold, our, sold the land no, we no, hunted. No. And there's a lot that goes into There's a lot of dynamics. Dis- yeah, a lot that goes into the decision depending on what they have, um, what they logged the mm-hmm. first time off of it. Maybe there's something on there that they just need to wait two or three more years and they'll relog it. Right. But yeah, no, no, it's not. It's not just a one dynamic thing. You know, and another thing to think about too. I mean, and, and I, I think you you've had uh, you know somebody's had a little bit of experience with this. You know, there may be an easement, um, you know, to a piece of public land. But if that if the the land of the easements on is sold and it's not renegotiated am i right in saying yep, that, exactly. that easement can be gone it, it the easement will be gone and it's up to that it's up it would be up to the the dnr which is the one that had this easement right access mm-hmm. written didn't follow up and they and it was dropped and i know the landowner doesn't want people trumpsing over his land right just to get to uh, a, a fishing spot slash public area right right you so, know so what do you do in that situation ex- that's uh, i that one it's on the dnr's fault yeah they should have been on top of it but they didn't and now they lost that that access to that area 
Yeah. I, I just, I don't know. There's so many legal, legal, legalese things that are involved with this, and it's not just as cut and dry. No, no. As, and, you know, you know, having and, access to public and you land. Get, and you get these, and I hate to say it, but you get these easements and, and people. Abuse it? Abuse it. Yeah. You know, you give them an inch and they take a foot and they leave. Trash. Trash and crap. Yeah, debris and, and tear stuff up and. Yeah, you know, it's like if you're going to go in on an easement and you're gaining access to public lands, you know, it doesn't matter if it's public land that you're on or the, or the easement you're crossing on private land. Respect the property you're on and, and take care of it and leave it better than than what you did when you walked in. Right, exactly. Only leave footprints, right? Exactly. You know, and it just, uh, but you know what, that sounds interesting that that happened and now all of a sudden this whole big area that was once is now gone. And it doesn't sound like they're going to get it back. No, no. I, I, they're talking thousands and thousands of acres. Uh, I mean, we're talking that, like I said, these Texas billionaires bought this <laughs> land. And I don't know what they're going to do with it. It doesn't matter. It's their land. They can do it whatever they choose. But the fact is, is they're closing it off, and it, it's not going to be open to public land hunting anymore. That so, stinks. So. really stinks. So keep on top of it and be vigilant. And hopefully if you're going to go somewhere special to hunt and that doesn't happen to you. Yeah, do a little bit of research into the background of the area that you're going to, you know, and just take a little time. It's like, okay, is this, are these commercial forestry lands that are open, you know, to public access? And, you know, do a little bit of research maybe, you know, maybe call the company and say, okay, hey, I'd like to, you know, I'm putting in for a draw in this area. I understand you've got public land to hunt. You know, how is it set up? You got, you know, what's out there? You know, just do a little investigation. Uh, for your own self, and just and maybe even ask that question. You know, this is not up for sale. I hope so it doesn't get taken out if I put in for this hunt. Exactly. So, but you know, at any point in time, just realize that that kind of stuff can happen. So. And it can happen at any time. Right on. So, well, I'll tell you what. Uh, well, we're running a little short here. We'll save a little sec- uh, time here in the next segment or towards the end of the show. And don't forget, we are drawing um, our Black Eagle Arrow winner for our second contest. Uh, we're drawing that here today at Cabela's. So. But you're gonna have to wait for it. To the end of the show. End of the show. <laughs> so uh, so we're going to continue to sit outside, and we're going to take our next break. We'll be right back after this. So what do you do when you've completely redefined the way bows are engineered? When you've reached the pinnacle and the band starts playing your victory song, you start a revolution out of thin air. Introducing the all-new PSE Carbon Air. Engineered with true carbon technology to be the lightest high-performance bow in the world. Experience PSE. Experience performance. We know the future of hunting depends on our nation's youth. But did you know that in many states, it's illegal for you to take your son or daughter hunting until the age of 12 or even older? As a result, we have fewer young hunters. And the Families of Field program is designed to eliminate those barriers. Hunting is safe. And the safest hunters of field are young people with adult mentors. Visit our website at familiesoffield.org to find out how you can bring more families of field. We are back live on Facebook, are we? Oh, there we are. Oh. Y- yes, we are. And we're back for the third segment oh, yeah. of the show. So, Ooh, I can actually see a little bit. Cloud. Clouds passing by, yeah. blocking the sun. Yeah, you just like looking at yourself in the camera on the phone there. That's well, all it is. It, it, the only reason I look good is because you look good. You make <laughs> me look good. <laughs> I, I don't quite know how to take that. Exactly. <laughs> I think it's a backhanded compliment. <laughs> in a way. Thanks. You're welcome. Wow. Okay. Well, but you know I see what? where I stand now. But you know what? We're here at Cabela's today, and we're in the bow area because it's archery. No, we're not. We're on the front porch. Well, actually, we're on the front porch. But actually, something happened really cool this week. Uh, the weather changed? <laughs> <laughs> well, that happened. Well, it's starting today. but uh, Archery uh, season began? Um, amongst the rain all week, uh, and before archery season started on Saturday here in Michigan, uh, PSE uh, unveiled something on Thursday live on Facebook. Yes, they did. They unveiled their their flagship lineup of their hunting bows for 2017. Man, OMG, OMG, and we're almost we're, we're almost <laughs> to 2017. Yeah, yeah. Well, that yeah, that's that's probably the, the other thing is yeah, the year is, is slipping by very quickly. But uh, three months left. Wow. Less so what than now. what do they have for us this upcoming year? 
Last year, I don't know how they're going to top the Carbonair. Well, they uh, they've done some things, and actually, that they even they even tweaked the Carbonair as well. Um, I watched their presentation, and forgive me, PSE, if I misquote a few little things here and there along the way because I don't have everything in front of me. But from watching and remembering, um, they've got the biggest thing that I took out. There's two new bows. Um, the Evolve 31 and 35, I believe, is what they're called, and that's axle axle lengths. Okay, so 31 and then 35. Yeah, and I believe as well that I think those are the aluminum riser bows that they come uh, out with. All aluminum riser bow. They have also come out with a new cam. and uh, Another new cam. Yes, and the best I can understand from what I've seen and the way it works is they have an adjustable um, let off mod built into the cam where you can adjust the let off at different percentages really so not just being like a, a an 80 percent let off or a 75 but you can you'll be able to adjust that to my understanding that's the way this works um and i believe it's a binary cam system as well um it's it, the best way that they talked about it it looks very complicated but very easy to adjust <laughs> Because it, it looks real techy. I mean, it, it looks, it, you know, and all I saw was they held the camera up to, to the to the bow that it was on. Uh, they put it on, on the Carbonair. It's on the Evolve uh, 3135, and I think maybe, maybe, maybe not on a couple other bows. Don't don't quote me on that. But, um, yeah, it's. Uh, Man, they're just coming out with this new stuff left and right. Just yeah. when you think they hit the, the pinnacle with the, the Carbonair. They right. go ahead, they tweak that, and they come out with an aluminum riser bow. Yeah. Going for, uh, just like the auto industry, uh, aluminum. Light, lighten going, things up. Lighten things up. Yeah. Uh, yeah, light but strong. Yeah. Well, And Blake Shelby, uh, the marketing manager there, he was he was on, and he was talking about and he's like, you know, being that it's a aluminum, it feels extremely stiff in the hand on the draw the whole the whole cycle. Oh, that's cool. He said so. And, you know, and that's the thing is, you know, anything they're putting out, that you know, they, they stand behind it, so. The technology, the guys they got there working on stuff is just incredible. The the things that they do every single year and bring new stuff out makes me wish we were a little bit closer than <laughs> you think, so we can pay a visit or two. <laughs> right on, yeah, definitely. I'd I'd like to be able to go out there and shoot some of my stuff. But he said that that they're going to start delivery on uh, the this new lineup as early, I believe, as this week. Stuff is going to start shipping if I heard him correctly. So start looking in your pro shops in the next couple of weeks, and so you'll be able to start shooting some of these. Yeah, I'm, I'm expecting uh, Jim over there at Spot Shooters in Holly. Uh, he'll be changing his sign soon to say 2017 stuff will be in. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, and that usually happens in November time frame. So right. in the next few weeks, get ready, folks. Right on. Yeah, so it's, uh, it, it's you know, it's just like cars, I guess. Cars come out, you know, in the, in the previous three, four, five, six months before the new year. You've got new <laughs> models coming out, but... You know, here it is, the week before archery season, and we've got new bows coming out, and it's just like, really? Yeah, no kidding. It's, <laughs> it's like, really? It's like, tease me right here before, you know, our Christmas season <laughs> for e us. You exactly. Know. You know, nothing like letting the cat out of the bag just before you're going into a hunting season, looking at your bow going, yeah. oh, boy. Yeah. But, you know, that's kind of cool, so we'll we'll definitely have to check into that and see if we can't maybe sneak over to Jim's. And yeah, if he gets some stuff in. If not, then we'll have to wait till ATA. Yep, we'll have to wait till then, and then we'll uh, then we'll talk to Bobby. Yeah. All right. And Bobby will explain. Yeah, yeah. So it's uh, so that's exciting. Yeah, and and they also I think a, it was earlier in the day or the day previous they did the same thing with their their flagship target bows. Did they? Oh, okay. Because uh, I I seen one they did. Uh, I I seen the one where they unveiled the bows. Yeah. Uh, and I th I think the one previous to that was something yeah. about bowstrings. Oh, and the one other thing that they did on some of their hunting bows this year is they they put the wedge lock system, uh, uh the wedge lock limb system pocket limb pocket on. Oh, into their yeah, hunting bows. Yeah, and uh, actually, um, Blake was saying that uh, some of these hunting bows, like maybe the Evolve 35, are going to become, he, he said, you're going to see a lot of these on the target range. You know, really? I, yeah, yeah, for target bows, yeah. Wow, imagine that. So, a, a bow you can take from the target range to the field. Yeah, so, yeah, pretty pretty cool stuff. They really, they're packing a lot of technology into these bows now, making them fully adjustable from top to bottom. You know that you can do right on your kitchen table or right there in the backyard while you're, while you're tuning. So right, uh, nothing like a. Uh, and technology just keeps coming. Just when you think it, <laughs> you've seen it all, you've seen it all. Yeah, they step up. Yeah, uh, and that and that's uh, w something about PSE we like is well, that they're never sitting on their hands. Well, I've got a buddy who works in and, and this. This is not in, in bows, but I mean, just talking about technology. He works in the automotive industry, and uh, you know he's talking about raw horsepower or, or power off of, you know, 
from the motor right to the asphalt. He says, really? We've only scratched about 40% of the technology of what we think we can get out of things. You know, and that's just right now. I mean, as technology evolves, it's, it's just going to keep getting, you know, better and better and better. But, uh, you know, high performance, you just keep seeing high performance continue to extend leaps and bounds. And we're not even going to touch the surface of the autonomous vehicle. Right, right. Yeah, so we're going to have a bow that shoots itself? <laughs> You would think we might get to that point because yeah. I know cars are getting to that point yeah. really quick. And from what I'm seeing at my job, that segment is going to be a leaps and bounds, uh, an amazing factor. That's going to be the next big thing, I think. You think? Oh, abs- for, uh, absolutely. You know, but so. uh, no, as far as archery is going, PSE stepping it up once again for 2017. Uh, something new that, again, it just keeps right, going right, right before archery season. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, something else you, you were talking about. Uh, came out too from uh, our friends at Deer Lab. Yeah, this week uh, they made an announcement. Uh, John Livingston over there at Deer Lab, uh, they put out a, a release talking about a new feature for Deer Lab. I mean, you know, for those of you who may uh, just be checking out the show for the first time or just tuned in since the last time we talked about Deer Lab, Deer Lab is a management system for trail cam photos. Uh, basically, as long as your time stamp, time and date stamp on your, your camera is correct. Is it pretty? Is it safe to say pretty much now that basically all the cameras do that now? He said all but one that he oh, knows all of. Yeah. He knows yeah, all and it's an older model of something. But, yeah, all the newer cameras basically do that. But you have to have your, your time and date stamp set correctly. That way it, what it does is it pulls information from uh, the National Weather Service for your location, and you actually GPS locate your camera, and it will pull the weather data. And you can start to take your photos and build an archive and pattern deer and, and tagging photos of certain bucks or certain animals or what have you for certain weather conditions. And the one thing that they added to it this week is they're now pulling moon phase data. Um, now I know there's, there's controversy within moon phase data. If people want either use it and believe in it or they say, no, I don't believe in it. But, but they have taken this for the people who, who want to use this feature uh, and, and incorporate it into Deer Lab. Another added feature to Deer Lab. Absolutely. You know, and it, it, now, like you said, depending on if you agree or disagree, it's just another tool in the Deer Lab toolbox to use. For right, your, right. You know, if it, and you know what? You might not be a believer today about yeah. moon phases, but if you're using Deer Lab and all of a sudden you start to see this and something starts to make sense, yeah, you never know. Well, you know, and w- you and I, we, we've talked about this many times and, and talked about planning our hunts around moon phase. And now, do I buy into it 100%? I, I don't know enough about it to really say yes or no i've heard pros and i've heard cons but the one thing that i do believe in because i see it firsthand is full moon at night yes full moon at night dear delight <laughs> you, you know? are not kidding that isn't that's exactly as long as there's no cloud cover no deer cloud, will feed all night long and it, it it's magnified if there's snow on the ground yeah absolutely so i mean because it is just something out there that uh We've seen it. If you get a little a trace of snow, a full moon, mm-hmm. y- you can basically walk out there without a flashlight. Bingo. You know, and, and the thing I like to try to plan hunts around, if I'm going to plan some time off and I've got the luxury to be able to do it, I'll look at moon phase, and I'll what I try to do is I'll try to catch full moon during the day. Full moon, okay. full moon rising in the morning, setting in the evening, because that way the moon's already s- is gone. There's no moon. set by the time it gets dark, and it's dark, dark. It's dark. And it's, okay, dear, it's time to go to bed. <laughs> go to sleep so yeah. you can get up in the morning and eat. And, that, and then what happens is when you play that, it, 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 almost, it almost, for me, it, it's almost like, okay, it was a full moon last night. If we had snow or if it was a clear night, the morning hunt's kind of, uh, yeah. it's not, I'd rather go out at 10. Right. Well, and, you know, and I think also, I mean, is it because of the moon? I think a lot of it has to do with hunting pressure as well. Oh, absolutely. When, when deer are pressured, you know, and they got to get to food sources, they, they, they can see and feed easier when there's a full moon with no cloud cover. And they can move about freely, and they don't have any other sense. They don't. It, yeah. it, it, it's like walking in the daylight for them. They get to their feeding source, then all of a sudden they're done and gone. They're like, let's go to bed. Right, right. So, so. nope, totally agree. That, that's kind of my, my thoughts on it, um, you know. What I'd like like to do is if if I can start to pattern some deer and see if I can see something that might trigger a thought, you know, exactly. I, I, I don't know. I mean, honestly, I mean, if you if you guys are out there listening to the show and you're like, yes, I believe in it, and you know, this is why, you know, put it on our Facebook. Yeah, page let us know. You start a conversation about it, uh, and if there's guys out there, and I and I know some of the guys we've talked about uh, personally about this. That, no, there's nothing to this. It's it's you know, 
people put a lot of thought into it, but it's, it's there's nothing really to it, you know. And I respect that as well. It's uh, but hey. like you said, it's, it's another tool in toolbox, and Deer Lab has made it available to be able to be used if uh, for whatever reason. And, and you know, what, and that's one thing nice about Deer Lab right now uh, is we just we just discussed pretty much any camera that you have, except for the exception of one. It sounds like uh, yeah. this will work. So yeah, absolutely, it, don't yep. think you gotta you're gonna spend. Uh, oh, I gotta go buy new cameras. Blah yeah. blah blah. It doesn't sound like you're going to need to do that. No, you know, and uh, actually I was able, yesterday I was down at Dundee working uh, for Vortex, and, you know, down there you're right in the middle of the hunting department, and that's where they send everybody that's got questions, right to that counter. <laughs> and a guy's got two Browning trail cameras in his hands, and I'm like, oh, I said, okay. I said, you got questions about them? And he's like, well, he says, actually, I'm just waiting on my buddy. He says, but what do you think about them? They're on sale. And I go, well, actually, I said, that's what I use is Browning trail cams. I said, and I love them. So then we started talking about the cameras. Then we started talking. I said, I told him about Deer Lab. And he's like, what? <laughs> what? And he's like, really? And I said, well, how many cameras are on? He said, oh, I got, you know, anywhere from six to eight out at a time. And I said, well, you really need to check into this. And I gave him the website and everything. And he was really intrigued. And he's going to go check it out. So. I, t- I tell you what, the, the thing about that is, you know what? Running sixty-eight cameras uh, on average of uh, let's just say a, a hundred pictures. So then you've now got six to eight hundred pictures you got to go through, organize. Yeah. yeah. Why not let Deer Lab do it? Yeah. Yeah. And start pulling weather data and see if you can pattern a butt. Exactly. You know, is he moving when you know right before uh, a cold front? Is he moving right after a cold front? Is he moving? You know, <laughs> full moon. Full full moon. Is he moving when you know you've got cloud cover and it's you know. Or if it's raining, you know, temperatures, wind conditions, all those t- different types of things, and seeing when he's he or she or it, depending on if it's a different if it's a predator you're hunting, seeing when they're moving. Yep, exactly. You know, so, I'm, I'm. It sounds like another another plus for Deer Lab. Yeah, I I like it. It works for me. Um, I think it's worth checking out. They do have a free trial for two two weeks, I believe it is. You can go over for 14 days, upload your pictures, and it's all stored on the cloud. So. So did the guy buy the cameras? Yeah. Of course he bought the cameras. There you go. <laughs> so, all right, I'll tell you what, we're bumping up on our last break here. Um, we're going to take our last break, but we're going to step inside. Yep. Go back to the archery shop, back in the tech court, and while they're wrenching on bows, we figure that's where we're going to draw our winner. Black Eagle winner for, for this, this second giveaway that we got for Black Eagle Arrows. Absolutely. All right, we'll be right back after this. The 2015 Dream Season Decree is a deadly combination of speed and precision. It's built for the moments when time stands still. When the only thing that will break the silence is an arrow slicing a clean path to the kill zone. The bow of your dreams is a nightmare for big game. This is PSE's Decree. Experience PSE. Experience performance. We know the future of hunting depends on our nation's youth. But did you know that in many states, it's illegal for you to take your son or daughter hunting until the age of 12 or even older? As a result, we have fewer young hunters, and the Families of Field program is designed to eliminate those barriers. Hunting is safe, and the safest hunters of field are young people with adult mentors. Visit our website at familiesoffield.org to find out how you can bring more families afield. All right, last segment of the show, we are back in the tech core, the deepest bowels of the archery department. We are. We are in the uh, – <laughs> oh, you, you're, you're pretty correct because we are in the back corner. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but we are now moved inside. Uh, they did not banish us to the sidewalk. Yeah, who, who's making comments that they kicked I know, us out of the I know, the, the, the peanut gallery out there is making comments that they, we were banished to the store. Not yet. You know, at least not yet. You're right. Yeah. So One day maybe. Um, one day um, – and yes, we'll we, we are going to draw the winner of the Black Eagle Arrows uh, giveaway, but we're not going to do it until the, the very last end of the show. Thing. No, no, so you no, have to no, put no, up no, with no. us right until the very end. That's right. You know, uh, we uh, earlier segment of the show we talked about new things coming mm-hmm. out, uh, PSC coming out, Deer Lab coming out. Mm-hmm. Uh, you did something new, mm-hmm. but not new. Uh, you did something traditional. Traditional, yeah. Archery season. Do you have any traditions that you do for archery season, or even hunting season? You know, lucky pair of socks, lucky underwear, lucky shirt. To tell you stand on your head and walk to your stand. Not really. I, I really don't have anything. No traditions. 
Dude, I can't think of a one that... that, that Lucky uh, Jacket? No. Really? I, I'm, I'm thinking Lucky Hat, but my hat seemed to change. Yeah. Maybe you that's know? what you try and change your luck. They're all bad luck? But could be, you know, but uh, you, on the other hand... Um, I got a Lucky Jacket that I use during turkey season. You got a Lucky player, pair of hair clippers, too. Yeah. Well, I don't know if they're lucky. I mean, I, I manage to hold my own every now and then, but yeah. Yeah, you hold your own. You, you hold your own and uh, shave your head. I, I didn't shave it. I just trimmed it. Dude... That's shaved. No, no, shave. Okay, shave means you take a, a, a razor to it. I did not take a razor to my head. I took a pair of clippers and took a number uh, a, did with no guard, in, which is basically a zero. And I, I, there's stubble there. I'll shave your head for you. No, you won't. I oh. I done that one time. And, did you really? Oh, uh, my hand stuck to my head when I put it on. It, it, it felt clammy. It's like no, I don't like this feeling. It's got to have a little stubble. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes. Yes. So, oh man. Yeah, that won't be happening okay. until it falls out. Okay. No, I I. Traditionally, but you do before that for archery season. Uh, yeah, I mean, playing the scent control game. I mean, that's kind of in the back of my head. The reason I do it, you know, hair holds certain. Uh, you know, it holds sweat. It, it does. It holds smells. There's oil in it. You know, all those things. Is, is it still coming out my head? Yeah, it's still coming out my head. Exactly. You know, you, you, it, it's it's all in that scent control game. Some people buy it. Some people don't buy it. Yeah. Well, and uh, yeah. Somebody on Facebook was was giving me the business about it a little bit, and uh, you know, it's like, just dude, quit quit worrying about stuff and go out and hunt. Right, exactly. And it's like, you know, it, it's more of a ritual thing for me to put me in uh, in the mindset of. And you it's know what? Season. You think about it though. Here we are, the week before season. You're 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 starting that. Shave your head. Yep. Uh, the weekend before, you're putting up your blind. It's just starting to fall in into things you do. And things next thing I got to do is get my my uh, scent lock. Ready. I got to throw it in the uh, the dryer and get it activated, get it back in the uh, the bag, the scent-free bag, and get it up to camp. Get it washed in the detergent, get it... Uh, no, no, no washing. No. You're just going to... Okay. No, this this is the, the newer stuff that doesn't need it as much. You just take it and activate it unless you need it, and then you spot wash it. But uh, no, I just... Uh, I'm just going to throw it in dryer, activate it, get it ready to go, throw it in there, and, uh, you know, get get all my stuff together, do some more shooting here in the next two weeks, get ready to rock, and, and uh, get up there and hopefully let some arrows fly. Absolutely. We got we definitely got to get some arrows flying here. Black eagle arrows. Black eagle arrows. Stay tuned for the drawing on that one. Yeah, definitely want to uh, stick one in something. You're going to have some, uh, some zombie arrows flying here. No, I'm shooting carnivores. Well, no, you're shooting zombies for something else. Oh, yes, I did get zombies. Yes. I take that back, yes. I I got and the new PSC RDX 400, yes, came in last did. week. Yes, you did. We had Jim assemble it. Don't have it shot yet, but uh, I'm very anxious to get that out and uh, get it ready so I can have something for late season. And so uh, I think you will enjoy it, and I think we'll enjoy seeing the effects of the zombies. Yeah, definitely. So, yep, yeah, we got some uh, zombie uh, crossbow bolts, Yep, and we're going to let them fly, man. And I'm going to shoot the carnivores out of my crossbow. Right on. So, but that RDX, uh, I tell you what, uh, I saw that over at Jim's and uh, heard a, a nice, lot of good things about it. It's a nice looking uh, crossbow. So, I think you, I think you're gonna, I think you're really going to like that come late season. Well, you know, and, and that's that's kind of the mindset with that. Uh, I'm still shooting vertical bow um, as long as my body will allow. And I notice every year, and, and pretty much every morning that I wake up as I get older, every day I, there's new aches and pains. So, you know, we're uh, it's just, there's no secret about that. As we get older, things get a little harder to do, and, and at one point, it, it's I'll have to make that switch. Well, you know, and that goes back to what we talked about earlier in the show, just another tool in your tool shed. You're right. You know, late season when it's cold and you're sitting in the stand and you want to be out late season archery hunting and, you know, you're sitting there for a couple hours and you're it's hard there, to pull back. You, you know, it's nice. You got you, the crossbow instead. Yeah, you got, it's nice you got muzzle loader season uh, in the beginning of December. Yeah. But after middle of December, when it all ends yeah. and all you have is the crossbow and bow, yeah, yeah it's going to be kind of nice. It's right like, on. Okay. Yep. Because it's going to get cold. Absolutely. So, you know, there, there, there'd be opportunities there to, to get back out and do a few things. But, uh, you know, speaking of muzzle loader season, we're, we're working on a project. With David Boggs. David Boggs, who used to be uh, one of our teammates here at Up North Journal. Right. Uh, him and I are working on something, uh, hopefully going to get some youth uh, from Backwater Legacies up to do a little muzzle loading hunting. Um, we'll keep you in tune on that, so that's something to pay attention to okay. coming up here in the next couple months. That should be entertaining. 
So uh, especially if we get kids involved and we get the kids out there and uh, they're going to take some uh, deer down for you up at camp. It's going to be nice. Yeah. Yeah. We're looking forward to getting some uh, some does taken Putting care of. Putting some smile on some faces. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. So, um, you know, in, in talking about does, uh, getting back to last week, I did look through some of those truck in photos. Okay. Um, still got some problems with some coyotes. Oh. We need to take care of. Uh, still got, we've seen a lot of doe. So, yeah, it, everything that we thought going into the season seems to still be translating itself through the trail cameras. You, it, you're you're kind of, another thing trail cameras can help you do is prove points. Exactly. You know, you've got some theories. Yeah. But yeah. now you're putting pictures to your theories, and now it's you can almost make factual statements. Yeah, yeah. And that's, you know, it, we're going to use, uh, I, I still don't have all my photos yet. I ran out of time. Uh, when I go back up, I will pull the rest of my camera cards and, and dump the videos, or the, dump the pictures, start organizing them for our trail cam study. You know, And then we're going to do a late season study as well. And that's going to hopefully, once we start putting all this together, give us our buck to doe ratio, give us our, our fawn uh, recruitment rate, um, figure out how, how many deer we have on the property, and we've got a formula that we can use for our carrying capacity and say, okay, we've got – X amount of deer too many or no, we're okay. You right, know, exactly. Or, you know, it, it, it's, it's going to start playing into that management. And w- another thing I'd like to do, um, and I don't know if we're going to be able to really get it going this year because uh, I don't, I haven't really expressed this a lot to the guys at camp, but I would like to start doing um, tags, camp tags for our deer that, that are taken off the property. And, and Oh, you mean, oh, okay, you mean. Like uh, the, the you, age, uh, the weight, you know, things of that nature. Help. Information tag per yeah, deer. Yeah, yeah, an information tag. Uh, okay. So right. instead of taking it and field dressing it, bring it back to camp, hang it on, on a scale, weigh it, get that the live weight or dead, actually oh, dead weight. Almost like a camp deer check station. Exactly. Exactly. You know, get all the information yep. you need. Um, Start building a, a, a database for our camp. Okay, so in five years from now, if we're still doing the same thing, are we seeing increased weight in our deer? Are right. We, are we harvesting? Are we... Let me change it. Are we killing <laughs> bigger deer? Are we are we taking deer that you know have you know more weight on them? Has everything you've done in the last five years been fruitful? Right to what you're doing instead of just guessing, saying yeah we're see- yeah we think our deer, but you know well, let's, let's let's do a little thing on our own. Let's just step back and I mean it's not that hard. And not only that, I got to thinking as well. If you take your deer, bring it back to camp, and not everybody has this ability to do this, right. but we're having a problem with coyotes. Okay, so now you field dressing your deer in the field. You throw the gut pile out. Dinner bell. Ding, ding, ding. Yeah, winner, winner, chicken dinner. Come get it. So you're giving predators a reason to, to stick around. Yeah. So let's say amongst all of our guys, we let's just say we take 20 deer this year, just yeah. as a number, and you've got 20 gut piles out there in a two-week period of time. Well, all you're doing is providing an extra meal for said coyotes. And it's a free meal, and trust me, when they find it, they're going to love it. Yeah, bring it back to camp, hang it on the pole, weigh it, zip it open, put a bag underneath it, let it all go in the bag, throw, take the garbage bag, throw it in the dumpster. Yep, and you have that ability that yeah. when you got a dumpster, you can you can just dispose of it. You know what? That'd be so much uh, better than, uh, unfortunately, we, we, we don't have that option, so we, we put it back into the woods. But we're, now we're learning to put it uh, in spots where we're not going to want to be. Right, so because right. <laughs> if we're not going to be there, the gut pile will, and then the, the right coyotes on. can go over there. Right, right on. You know, speaking of coyotes, we do one of our mini casts here later on for, for the week. Um, I got something about coyotes I want to talk about that I, I heard from a gentleman yesterday that might raise an eyebrow or two. Really? Yeah, yeah. So I'll just I'll just kind of throw that out there. So oh, that's cool. See what you think. So stay so. tuned for that. Yeah, right? absolutely. So well, we're running up here towards the end of the show. What do you think? I think it's time that we. Uh, we draw something. All right. Well, uh, hang on here one second. Let's get everything ready. All right. Dan's All right. got the hat, the lucky hat. I got the hat. I've How got are we doing this? we got 14 numbers. we got 14 possible winners. Okay. And, and in this hat of mine, uh-huh. well, it's actually a Cabela's hat, uh, we've got 1 through 14. Okay. So whatever number Nicole will pull. You've got them all numbered uh, on your little booklet I've here. got it numbered right here, so we'll know instantaneously who wins. All right. Ready, right. Nicole? So we've got our. Oh, look our at her. She's all, con- yeah. all confident over there. Oh, yeah. you want to. Oh, oh, uh, Ryan's going to step in. Oh, wait a minute. All right. She's Pull getting it. blocked out. Here we go. We got number. What number we got? Five. Number, number five. five. Clint Turner. Clint Turner, our good buddy in Illinois. 
<laughs> Thanks, Ryan, for pulling the number. Thanks. So Clint Turner will be getting a half dozen of which outlaws? Outlaws from Black Outlaw, Eagle Arrows. Black Eagle Arrows, and he'll be getting some nose jammer and some other up north journal swag. Swag. Love up these north swag. journal koozies. So yeah. uh, Clint Turner, I will be in touch with you here in no time. All righty, guys, that'll do it this week for the show. Uh, stay tuned for some mini casts coming out this week. Uh, as well as our PSE Tech Tip and Throwback Thursday. Don't forget, you can also catch us over on the Outdoor Podcast channel. And uh, we've got uh, a new show over there running as well. So make sure you check out all of our great shows that we've got over there. People are out hitting it hard in the woods this week. And if, uh, if you're one of the fortunate people to be able to do that, remember, as we have always said here at the Up North Journal, shoot straight, be safe. This episode was brought to you by PSE Archery. Black Eagle Arrows. Cabela's. Antler Action, Spot Shooter Archery, Tom's Custom Turkey Calls, Family Traditions Tree Stands, and Badass Sling Shots. Thanks for listening, and join us again here next week. Until then, remember, as we always like to say, if you're out on the water or in the woods, shoot straight and be safe until next week on the Up North Journal.